Hey everybody, this review for Death Stranding is going to contain full spoilers for the story, all kinds of in-game unlocks, what the maps will look like, character interactions, cutscenes, all kinds of stuff you probably don't want spoiled for you. If that's the case, stop watching now, save this video for later until you've beaten Death Stranding, and now with that out of the way, here's my review. Hey everybody, so I beat Death Stranding uh, late one night, uh, couple nights ago. Anyway, finally finished it up. Still have more missions to do and a few prepper stations to connect to the chiral network in the central region, but on the whole, the game's done. I beat it. I completed the story. Credits rolled three times. The last two hours of the game were pure cutscene. It was very much a Kojima ending. Um, and so now that I've completed it, I just wanted to make this video review, even though the game's been out for over a month, just to kind of collect my thoughts. Uh, all in one place on it. So, first off, I really like the game on the whole. I'd say 8 out of 10 is my score for it, and with that out of the way, getting into why. Um, love the graphics. Visuals are absolutely incredible. The performance capture is really amazing, and for a world that is mostly just like grass and rocks and mud and snow, it's all really well textured and looks great. Um, the weapons and vehicles you use look interesting. I think the reverse trike is probably my favorite vehicle in the game. A lot of really good music in the game, both in the original score and the licensed stuff from various artists. Uh, Low Roar, this group I'd never heard of before, features in the game a lot and did some original stuff for it as well as groups like Churches and uh, a few others. Now a song. Let's pull that camera out way back. Gameplay-wise, a lot of people say it's a walking simulator. I'd say that's true, at least until you start unlocking vehicles and zip lines and stuff like that. But yeah, you're going to have to know how to navigate from A to B to C. And you're constantly going to be scanning the environment with your Odra deck. That's the main gadget you're always going to have on you. The Odra deck is a little, like, flappy thing on Sam's shoulder. I love it. I think it's really cool. I love scanning the environment to know, like, depth of water, uh, what kind of... Visually, most terrain will be able to know what's going to be smooth and what's not. Rocks are going to be rougher to walk on than just flat ground. Where I think the game starts to show some issues is when you start to try and deviate from the story a little bit, or when you try and get away from just the story missions while you're still trying to make your way through it. Saw a lot of write-ups while I was playing through it. I didn't want to read too many uh, to avoid spoilers, saying that you should move through the game quickly and you shouldn't grind and you should just play through the story and then do all that stuff afterwards. And on the whole, that's it's pretty much right. If there's a few things, like item upgrades you want to grind for a little bit, maybe it's worth it, but the level 1 equipment or level 2 stuff is totally suitable to get through the game, especially on normal difficulty. And it really feels like the game just wants you to like, see the whole story, play every single chapter, watch all the cutscenes, see the credits roll three times, and then it feels like you finally actually get to play the game. Uh, it felt kind of like the boys in South Park in the Warcraft episode at the very end, where after grinding for hours on end, one of the greatest punchlines is, well, what do we do now? What do you mean? We can finally play the game. Uh, it feels like that. I really love the gameplay loop of delivering packages, figuring out how I'm going to get to a place, planning my route very specifically, drawing it out on the map, um, preparing myself for what items I'm going to need to bring, uh, do I want to build structures along the way, do I have enough repair uh, spray, do I have weapons that are non-lethal because I don't want to have to deal with disposing of corpses? Do I have enough stuff that can deal with BTs? Do I have enough blood bags to regenerate hematic rounds and also the blood loss I get from using hematic rounds? That's a really cool system, by the way, I think. Um, so that was all really awesome. Uh, and yeah, the game, I would say on the whole, is super easy. I never, for the most part, it it never felt challenging. At most, it just felt frustrating. And that frustration comes around less, like at first the game, 
is difficult because you're trying to learn the controls and Sam isn't leveled up and has no abilities or items to carry things or carry that much and his balance is all off and so you're just struggling to just walk a place. But then pretty quickly you start getting exoskeletons and you can carry away more and walking and sprinting is no problem now. And you unlock all these weapons and all these tools and all these vehicles and it starts feeling really fun. You have a lot more at your disposal to handle mules, to handle terrorists, to handle BTs. And the game's idea of difficulty is not giving you more situations in which you can use these items so, uh, so much. It's not in challenging you to think about more ways to use certain things that tools that it's given you. It's more just taking those tools away temporarily. I think the game, especially when you're entering BT areas, and this this is one of the things that really rears its head when you're grinding, um, it does this annoying thing of first the game will slow down, let you know you're in a rainy BT area. And I guess that's like maybe to let you know if you want to turn around, turn around. Then you'll you'll most likely need to or want to press on through the area because it's the route you need to go through. Uh, and then the game will stop you again, maybe just a few seconds later, and then do another animation where the Odra deck pops up and BB starts scanning for BTs. And that's just one of these things where it feels that could all be in one animation. It doesn't need to be two separate things where it's this start and stop. And that happens a lot when you're trying to drive through these areas where the BTs show up. It's something that you're really not likely to notice as much unless you're grinding like I was, trying to level up connections with different people. Um, but it was frustrating. Really where it gets frustrating in particular is if you're going uphill on a vehicle. Uh, when the game stops you, you lose all control of your vehicle, and if you're going uphill, you lose traction, you might slide down and lose a lot of progress. That was the biggest example of where the game stopping me actively cost me progress in my journey, and that was frustrating. The story, I think, has a good amount of mystery to it. The payoffs vary. Uh... I think the acting across the board is really solid. Going back again to the facial capture, this was well cast. I think the writing uh, is where the game and the story kind of falter sometimes. Kojima, I feel, definitely takes an hour to say what you can in 30 minutes. And I say, you know, hey, you know, Kojima production shirt, I bought this at like the New York City art show leading up to the release of the game. I'm a Kojima fan, love Metal Gear. Uh, I know that I, I, you know, know what Kojima's like, so certainly I didn't know what this game was going to be, but I had a rough sense of the kind of stylings I'd be getting myself into. Uh, this game does a lot of tell and not show, which is unfortunate. There's a lot of moments in the game where conversations are had and a lot of information is delivered to you in very dry, emotionless ways, but the context and the content of these conversations you would normally expect to have more emotion behind them hmm. uh, more weight being given to them by the characters and so when everyone's just kind of very blase monotone about it, it doesn't feel like it has the urgency that the game is telling you it does uh, there's a lot of in-game in-universe jargon that characters rarely talk about or explain you have to dig into menus and files and read a bunch which is fine it's some of it's really interesting some of it less so but the problem is there are major terms that are constantly thrown out and very poorly explained to the player uh but the characters know exactly what's going on and it just it can be a little tough to know what the weight of something is what what the stakes are when people keep talking about beaches and dooms. Carbon spikes have become far more frequent, possibly as a result of expanding the network nationwide. Too many beaches sharing the same space, wires get crossed and so forth. You can see the toll it's taking on the network itself. With things the way they are, it's too dangerous to risk jumping through a beach. Even if I reach a beach, there's no telling where I'll come out on the other side. And I could get stuck in there. That's why I can't go to you either. But if I could get to the entrance of the beach, I should be able to get you there. The beaches are still there after all. I can personally attest to that. So, chapter 10 of Death Stranding, it's called Die Hard Man. Uh, 
reminded me most similarly of chapter 13 and final fantasy 15 in that both chapters of this game at a time when the game really needs to build up momentum and be really reaching its climax and ultimately its conclusion the game just kind of grinds to a sudden halt strips away a lot of the momentum it had been building up takes away your character's items and abilities and just makes you kind of go through the game very slowly at a point when you don't want to. So yeah, you will need to hold yourself all the way back here. But once you have, I promise I'll take you to Amelie. Straight to her beach. The two of Boo. you share a very special connection. Boo. Dreamcatcher. Fucking Boo. They are no mere trinkets. Backtrack singular, all the way across the bounds because they say so. Fucking memories. fuck that. Two sides of a no. Coin. You have to backtrack across the entire map. First the central region, then the eastern region. Central region took me about an hour. Uh, I had a lot of structures built both by me and other players, so it was easy. I spent a little bit of time laying down some fresh zip lines to build a new route for myself, so that probably added maybe... I'd say at most 10 to 15 minutes, but it still took the better part of an hour to get across this map. I'm so mad. Get all the way back here from here. Fuck you, game. Like, <laughs> really? I don't even want to hear from anybody. Sam, Stop talking. Stop talking to Be me. Be advised that chiral density in regions predisposed to strandings has increased dramatically. Great. No doubt the beach is to blame. Mm -hmm. BTs drawn into our world under these circumstances may be affected in unpredictable ways. The frustrating part is that while making my way across, the character Dead Man calls me on uh, my phone, the uh, wrist device, whatever, uh, to tell me things about Cliff Unger, uh, a character I just encountered at the beach and who we now think is like behind everything at least the characters thought that at that point in the game calls me to tell me stuff Cliff Unger by the way is Mads Mikkelsen's character who we see throughout various flashback sequences in the game whenever Sam hooks into BB if you're paying attention to those scenes and you're paying attention to other conversations and other cutscenes early in the game all the things that Dead Man's telling you in these conversations None of it's new. Uh, it's all stuff I had either figured out or guessed or whatever. It, none of it was particularly compelling, and it's because it's a character who's not directly related to these events or these characters telling us about them, not even showing us, just telling us, and not even telling us in a particularly emotional or engaging way. And so... Dead Man calls you four separate times on the way back, and each time he called me, uh, I got more and more frustrated because... It wasn't useful, it wasn't interesting, and it was just stopping my progress. It was slowing me down from doing something that I already didn't want to do. I was already mad that I had to backtrack. I was already frustrated just by the very fact that I had to do what the game was asking me to do. Um, and the fact that the game had the gall to stop me four separate times for conversations that I couldn't, for whatever reason, to just listen to while I was walking or riding a bike or whatever really frustrated me. I'm so fucking annoyed right now. This isn't, like, fun. This is just, hey, you have none of your items. You have no materials to build items with. Uh, start with nothing again. Go fuck yourself. But hey, here's one of, like, 25 low war songs we put in the game, so enjoy that. And that was one of the strongest examples to me of bad writing in the game it just felt like all the momentum that i had going into this section of the game okay we're reaching a conclusion we're finishing this uh stripped away it made me really bummed out for the final hours of the game and what's more is that as far as the actual game is concerned there wasn't much more game left that big backtracking that's it when you finish the eastern region and frustratingly enough, they delete all your structures there. Uh, once you finish that region, there's a big boss fight against this big, you know, sandworm 
Final Fantasy summon whale tar monster thing, and it looks really cool. not very hard to beat but it looks cool uh, after that boss fight it's, it's pretty much cutscenes and a little bit of walking and then a hell of a lot more cutscenes and the credits are gonna roll three times and then you get to do a little bit more walking and then finally uh, the game almost does a Rick and Morty style it's now three weeks earlier two weeks earlier um, from the very end of the game you get to that's like how they for the story purposes allow you to go back into the open world and back into the state where you could be doing missions and things like that um so yeah late game frustrations aside uh and some issues with the story i thought really cool compelling story stuff around sam as a character and him not wanting to connect with others and then him learning to open up and you know make connections uh with mads mickelson's character and all the mystery surrounding cliff and his connection to bb that stuff was all really compelling i thought die hard man had a really awesome well acted and emotional scene toward the end. I will make the same mistake. Be yourself. Be free. Oh my god. Captain. you to hand it over shoot him john let it go please shoot him i gave you an order shoot him he told me your name was sam porter Just like any other cliff. Dead end. No way forward. Nothing but an obstacle. Looking on at the world people like you are trying to build. Um, other characters fell flat for me I thought it was cool that you know we get the likeness of Guillermo del Toro and uh, stuff like that but I, I just felt so many times he was calling my character telling me just useless bullshit that I didn't care about or I definitely didn't care about in that moment it always seemed like it, it was back to Metal Gear Solid 1 of Colonel calling Snake so many separate times to tell you all the different things the action button can be used for um, it felt that part felt dated it didn't feel like a cute throwback to Metal Gear it felt like there could have been a more succinct and better way to convey the information to the player 
you know, whether it through gameplay or through a cutscene or something like that, as opposed to a really dry conversation, just a monologue I have to listen to or skip. And by the end of chat, like the last time that man called me in chapter 10, I just skipped everything he had to say. Who knows? It might have been really interesting. But I, I just did. I found myself not caring by that point. And that was, that was a bit of a bummer. I, I really think this game is special. Even if it's not perfect, like, who cares? Kojima and Kojima Productions tried something new. I think there's a lot... Just the game in its own merits. It's doing something unique. Um, it takes what, in most other games, would be a really boring fetch quest and makes a whole challenge out of the journey and not so much the destination. The only other game uh, that I played... And it's, pretty recent as well that really gives this feeling to me as well kind of is red dead 2 and how you have to be careful riding your horse and you don't want to lose the you know animal skins or whatever packages you have on your horse or in your wagon um so you have to be careful how you navigate the terrain not to the extent that you do in death stranding you're not constantly holding arthur's shoulder straps or whatever to keep him from toppling over because he's carrying too many guns or something but um that was it's, that's as close as I'd say any other game has gotten to what Death Stranding is doing with the terrain navigation and things like that. So Death Stranding, certainly a game I don't see being for everybody. To me, I really love the mechanics around delivering packages, making connections with the chiral network, and linking up structures with other people built, helping other people by upgrading their stuff, repairing their stuff giving likes, getting likes. Everyone's just helping everybody, and that's a great way to have an asynchronous multiplayer mode. And, like, there are a couple people kind of trolling by having trucks in the world or something like that, but it's easy enough to get rid of those, and they don't take up that much chiral bandwidth. It's, it's really not that big a deal. But it's really hard to troll in this game. There's really no way to do it. Um, and anything that someone comes up with, it seems like they're willing to patch out. So I love that commitment to... A multiplayer mode where we're all just helping each other and the themes in the game is about connecting building bridges not walls that's great even if kojima like i said before does take 30 minutes to say what you couldn't an hour or take an hour to say what you could in 30 minutes uh and kind of hit you over the head with his themes it's still on the whole well told definitely could have used a few other writers i feel to help pare it down but then maybe this game just it wouldn't be as kojima as it would be and that's one of the other exciting things about this game is hideo kojima got to make a video game exactly the way he wanted to make a game uh no one really to tell him no plenty of people would debate whether that's a good thing or a bad thing but hey if you wanted it you've got it this is a hideo kojima kojima productions game through and through um I'm really happy I played it. I think it added something to video games with its systems around terrain, you know, crossing and management, plotting routes, and the connections you make with players online, even though you don't see them. That felt, other games have, I felt tried to do something like that, and it just hasn't felt anywhere near as meaningful as it has in this game. And so, if nothing else, it has that for a strength. But I would definitely be interested in seeing more in the world of Death Stranding. I definitely want to see more Norman Reedus and Mads Mikkelsen acting in video games. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been my Death Stranding review. If you liked it and you want to see more of my channel, you can give me a, you can click the subscribe button. If you want to give me a follow on Twitch, I'm at twitch.tv slash gal513. And I'm also on Instagram as gal513 as well. Uh, I stream most nights during the week. I'm trying to get on a more regular schedule and figure out exactly what I want to be streaming more regularly. But yeah, come check me out. Thank you guys so much. Peace out. See you next time.